Hello everybody and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. Today we're doing a review of the Kindle. I realise that this may be a controversial one because it is owned by Amazon but we'll get there. Kindle was developed in 2007 by Amazon subsidiary Lab126 with codename Fiona. The foundation of the Kindle stemmed from a 2004 Jeff Bezos instruction to develop a competitive e-reader. At this time there were e-readers on the market. I'm pretty sure it was Sony who had e-readers out or the most popular e-reader out at the time. The intention has uh, always been a singular focus on being a reading device over being a multi-purpose device. The first release sold out in five and a half hours and remained sold out um, that way for five months until April 2008. The online Kindle store was established online and active from November 2007. By May 2008, Kindle sales represented 6% of Amazon book sales and over the next few years or several years, Newer Kindles were released as were updated software technologies such as WhisperSync. In 2008, a waterproof Kindle Paperwhite was released in 8GB and 32GB versions. The modern design was thinner, lighter and sported a glass cover. Kindle 2019, which is the baseline model, I guess you would call it, is released in April with four gigabyte of storage before a July 2019 third gen Oasis is released. So uh, the 2019 or Kindle 2019 is the uh, basic version, the Paperwhite is the mid-range version and the Oasis is the top of the line version essentially. And they all come with slightly different specs um, over that and slightly different. Uh, so it depends on what you want is to the one that you would pick. These three styles in four size versions are the, well, the paper white comes in two sizes. I didn't look up the Oasis to be honest with you. So I don't know if that comes in multiple sizes. Um, are the current Kindle Creed. This, uh, this one here in front of us is the Kindle 32 gig Paperwhite with e-ink captive touch screen. This case I thought looked kind of cozy and kind of cute. Uh, so that's why uh, I kind of picked this one um, and it's worked out perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, it's got a couple, a little bit of, you know, where, where I put it up and down, but there's literally nothing wrong with it. I have dropped it a couple of times and had no issue with this cover on my Kindle. So I had about seven or so years ago had a Kobo. In fact, I still have the Kobo app on my phone and access to the books I had while I had that Kobo. In fact, um, I just did not get down with the whole e-reader situation at that time. Um, when my father's e-reader broke, I gave him, you know, the Kobo that I didn't really use, even though I kind of carried it around with me and it was generally in my bag. I just didn't find that I used the e-reader. There's nothing wrong with the Kobo. Um, but he had like a no-name brand variety of e-reader and I think it had it a couple of years but then obviously at some point it had broken and I was like oh here have mine <laughs> so that's kind of what happened with the Kobo and to be fair they used it all the time um, my father and his wife um, I think they had two e-readers one each um, even though they probably shared it they said that they just had different books on both of the uh, e-readers that they had um, and they're like, oh, we could just use one. And I was like, well, yeah, you could, but I don't use mine and you guys use them all the time. So here. And it was because it was already preloaded with all the books I had. There was probably a significant amount of books um, that they didn't, that they 
hadn't put on theirs so it just gave them access to a different um, range of books and keeping the Kobo was just kind of a waste of it for me so because I didn't use it um, I got this one last year year before last but I think the start of 2020 I got this um, and it was because I was kind of um, planning <laughs> to do some travel so I had four or five months of travel set up for 2020 I think we all know by now what happened to that um, so but it, it, irrelevant of uh, why that did not happen I had prepped by uh, getting an e-reader so that I didn't obviously take around books with me but prior to that most of the books that I had I had a couple of big picture books um, that I usually bought new but I was a very big secondhand bookstore slash op shop books buyer um, so most of the books that I had purchased and read and done all that type of stuff with were from secondhand stores and thrift stores so I didn't necessarily always buy new books probably the most new books that I'd bought were either graphic novels or coffee table books so <laughs> to this. The display utilizes e-ink or electronic ink developed in 1997 but based on the idea of low power paper like displays that or the ideology around this has existed since the 1970s. The technology, the e-ink technology is commonly used in e-readers, digital signage, smartwatches, mobile phones, electronic shelf labels and architecture panels. I am now going to deal with the cons that I found um, with the Kindle first up. So uh, first, the Kindle is heavily restricted in Australia. So the benefits that you will find in the USA, such as Prime and Audible benefits vanish in Australia. So we do have Prime and Audible here, but uh, from what I can gather in the US versions of the Kindle, you can actually listen to audible narration on your Kindle device. That and the Kindle device in the US also has a Bluetooth technology to obviously listen to your ebook or, or, or to your um, audio book. And you can also, like, you know, have the, and you can actually buy both at the same time a lot of the time when you actually purchase a book it comes up with the books that are eligible come up with a purchase the audible narration for an extra you know three five ten dollars or whatever against the book so um, Amazon technology and or the, the software that keeps Kindle and audible synced across several devices is whisper sync um, so you can read the book and switch to the audible narration seamlessly um, and it's available on the, some electronic books that you purchase, as I just said. However, this is not available on um, Australian devices. So uh, from what the research that I did, I gathered that th like this paperwhite, you can listen to the Audible on the device. You can't do that in Australia. They also block you. So this would mean that I'd have to actually use my mobile phone to listen to the audible narration, which then kind of defeats the purpose of having audible narration with the book on the Kindle because I don't have access to that. And it also kind of defeats having the Kindle for its extended battery life over, say, my mobile phone, which needs to be at least daily charged. Which kind of brings me to my next point. The battery is meant to last approximately six or so-ish weeks. But this is really only if you never ever use it. Um, I think it can last up to eight weeks if you literally charge it and just don't touch it after that. If I heavily use it, let's just say two and a half to three hours per day, it lasts me 10 to 12 days, sometimes even less if I use it more. Um, there are no Bluetooth capacities for the Paperwhite uh, in Australia, unlike the US. Kindle accepts uh, nominally, nominally at least several different formats such as PDF and Word but due to the ebook's own proprietary ebook format created by Amazon with the extension .azw um, and it's kind of like a Mobi format not a Mobi, the other one um, EPUB format 
Oh, similar to that, um, I have found quite a few rejections of books that I had stored uh, due to my previous Kin Kobo ownership. I had a substantial book collection and electronic book collection and I could transfer approximately a third of that over to this Kindle. I have found that the screen, you know, could can be both super sensitive as in highlights words or passages super easy but also is frustratingly so when attempting to turn the page scroll through the kindle shop or go to a specific uh, folder or page while you're searching for a book it becomes maddeningly slow during these times so it's almost not responsive when you try and search for search for something and of course we're used to the way that mobile phone touchscreens work now and a lot of the time we I have uh, my laptop is a touchscreen my phone is a touchscreen and they work so much significantly faster than a touchscreen on this Kindle but then every time I'm reading a book it highlights a word or a passage and it just kind of becomes a well can't you just turn the page quicker It would be much more convenient if this could be more responsive in general to the touchscreen, but also not highlight everything in the gust of a wind. It also has a black and white screen, which is super useful for extending the battery life, but not so much with photos or art. It also doesn't accept graphic novel format, which comes with the extension CBC or CBZ, which is kind of another negative here, I feel. I quite enjoy graphic novels. Um, new releases can also, new releases on in the Amazon store, the Kindle store, uh, can actually still be quite expensive. They can be up to $25, $30, which is the same price as a physical book in Australia. So uh, Kindle, um, Unlimited, which is essentially a library that you can borrow and return books from, uh, which can be quite convenient. And often you can get the deals where it costs X amount for three months and then like a monthly fee after that. And they don't really carry a lot of new releases on the Kindle Unlimited. And a lot, you can elect to, if you publish a book on Amazon, you can elect to join the Kindle program like the Kindle Unlimited program so your book is offered this way which can be convenient for people who have this option or, or are self-publishing books and but if you're on Amazon Unlimited to actually kind of read new releases and return them I think you get up to 10 books that you can borrow from Kindle Unlimited at a time but again it doesn't necessarily carry all the new releases which is unlike a normal physical library would so your normal physical library gets new releases and you can go down and you know rent it or hire it or at least go on a wait list to rent or hire it so um, on top of that international authors that are um, on Kindle Unlimited are often only there for a uh, short time so the book we might be on a month or two in Kindle Unlimited and then get out so that can be kind of frustrating for essentially an online library. In addition since Amazon's uh, showing site is active purchase of the uh, American purchases from the American Kindle shop or America or Unlimited can be geolocation blocked and you can't actually purchase an American Kindle with audible narration from the American site it will essentially geolock their and it's, which is a bit weird because um, uh, Amazon is essentially geolocking literally their own propriety brand which I found super weird because it's not like they are going to have um, issues with copyright being that this is their this is essentially their copyright which seems a bit uh, weird <laughs> to me so but other issues that I've had is that sorting big books on here is actually quite counterintuitive so I obviously preloaded the books that I had already purchased or already owned and uh, this is this has kind of resulted in a cumulative total of about 
10 to 11 gigabyte of books that are currently on this machine. Uh, sorting through them and into folders was a nightmare and took about three months. And while it could be easy, while sorting them into a folder can be quite easy if you have an author, say like Alex Archer, some of these are sorted into um, sections. Agatha Christie, Alastair Reynolds. So the, when you're sorting by author, you can select uh, all of the author, but sometimes I have folders in here, like I have a history folder, so all the books that have been written about history, or I have, uh, you know, LGBT lesbian literature fic uh, folder um, on here as well, which means I can biography folder, there you go, there's a biography folder. So trying to sort through that can be infuriatingly frustrating to do. So that biography folder has 334 books in it and because there are a variety of authors and essentially this sorts it by, you can sort it by author or title but you're not necessarily going to get an obviously an obvious autobiography or biography when you're sorting it that way. So sorting them into folders can be super infuriating and just take so long if you're not sorting them by author. So I've got a cooking one, I've got classics. So I've got quite a few folders in here that just took a long time to get all of the books sorted out into. I think I had over a thousand like 1200 pages of books with like in this setup with the six books per page and yeah so that sorting them into folders makes sense because then genres and collections are actually easier to find and easier to set up and it's just easier to find all the books that I need to with this however it just became crazy irritating to sort through so many books into the folders um so 513 books in history that was one of the biggest folders that i do have in here so that was one of the frustrated frustrations that i had so these are the books at the back that i haven't actually sorted out into the folders yet uh, these are some uh, kind of recent or current books that I'm looking at or purchases or gifts that I've had. So when you, how you know it's a Kindle Unlimited is that it has, uh, it depends if it's going to focus on this at the moment, it has the Kindle Unlimited section at the top. So. <laughs> Now for, I guess, the positives of the Kindle. This is super lightweight and actually is small enough to fit into my pockets and that's super impressive being that I wear clothes that are aimed at women and can be super infuriating with the pocket size. At six inches it is easy to carry and this is the best collection of books that I could carry and it's also personalised to my taste. I will always have a book in a genre I want to read and if I don't feel like reading what I'm currently reading I can also easily change up the books. So the screen is fully adjustable by brightness and size meaning that the tighter my eyes get the bigger and gentler I can make the tests. The screen is also a matte uh, screen allowing for a glare free clear display even in full sunshine. It provides an offline multilingual disc dictionary that is kind of preloaded onto the machine and access to one of the biggest online library, commercial libraries, as in Kindle Unlimited. Also, I have been able to read an article about great books or the best books of which of it 2020 or 2018 or whatever by um, and go to Kindle and get them. A really great example of this is River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey, uh, which is this book down here. It's a collection of three stories, which is why it's here. It's called American Hippo because it's the collection of three. Um, but the description of the book was that to solve the meat crisis of 1909 by populating Louisiana swamplands with hippos. Um, I obviously found this description super hilarious. And I went to the Kindle store and River of Teeth was on sale for like $3. Um, and the collection of the three stories in this uh, genre 
were I think like seven ninety eight or something at the time. So I purchased the story of three. And then when I read the forward, it said that this was based on a real life actual plan, and it was outlined and or overviewed in the Atavist magazine article American Hippopotamus by John Mulem Mulalem. Uh, which was part of the Kindle Unlimited program, which is actually this book up here. So I have actually borrowed that from the Kindle Unlimited library so that I could read this and read the retelling of this seemingly, seemingly crazy plan and then you could read the fiction book about that. I may have forgotten the article or the book that this idea came from because it happened months, months ago, but uh, now I don't have to. I could actually focus on my graphic novel and coffee book collection so I could actually just go straight to Kindle I could get them I could borrow them and then they were on my book to read so then the next month when I was looking at my Kindle going what am I going to read I can go oh it was the American Hippo thing it was this story about and then I recalled it which I probably wouldn't have if I just went what was that book that they were talking about or what was that funny story that I was laughing about and so it does give you access to be able to go and do this stuff kind of straight away or you'll get the book on sale or you'll get the book for cheap and it just makes things easier to access when you have it on this type of device. So this whole kind of scenario about the hippopotamus plan for Louisiana Swamplands would not have actually happened with if I hadn't owned a Kindle. I now can actually focus on my graphic novel and coffee table collection in physical format and don't have to worry about the fiction or the biography which I actually love to read side of things because I can actually have this on a Kindle. It is exceptionally small, convenient and light, fits into my backpack, fits into my pocket, I can travel with it, it has lifted my book hoarding load considerably in getting this. So this is kind of my review of the Kindle and uh, my positives and negatives with it. Um, I probably wouldn't want to give that up now. So um, it is a super useful device. So thank you for watching and uh, as usual all links will be down in the description box below including uh, the books that I've mentioned as well as some other ones that I like. Um, some of them will be in the Kindle Unlimited program, some may no longer. Um, enjoy your morning, afternoon or evening depending on where you are in the day and I of course will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.